I'm going to teach you how to sew on a button. Or maybe you already know, but you just want to know how the professionals do it. As you can see, we make garments in our shop. We're tailors, so we know a few things. Um, here, I have a shirt and a jacket. What I want to show you here is... I'll show you on this button here, for starters. This is a metal button that has a metal shank in the back. The shank is, some, is an important feature of a button because it allows the space for the other side of the garment to live freely without being pinched. So here we want to replicate this shank with thread if your button doesn't have a shank itself. You can see here on this jacket that these buttons have a nice size shank. And what do I mean by nice size shank? It means it's the same size as, or the same thickness as the jacket itself. So that's what we're going for with the shank, that the size of the shank should match the thickness of the fabric. That way when we button it, the button won't hang out extra, like farther away from the fabric, but it won't be pinched either. So on this shirt, the thickness of the shirt fabric is less than the thickness of the jacket fabric, so the shank is smaller also. It's pretty, like, it's only, it's only a tiny little shank, whereas this is, this is what, maybe? A little bigger than, a fat eighth of an inch, whereas this is less. The materials that we need to sew on a button are a needle and thread being the most essential, well, and also the button. Um, I like to use a thimble. This, there's many types of thimbles. This is my tailor's thimble. You need some snips. It's helpful to have a pencil to mark your button placement if, you don't, if it's not a button that's being replaced, and so there are, there, if there aren't holes there already from a previous button. And the thread that we're using here is our Mars 40 thread from Poland. Um, needles, there are different types of needles that can be used, really any small needle can be used. Um, I say small, you can use any needle, but um, I, I like them when they're not terribly long. I might choose this one if here, and if I have my druthers where I get to choose any needle I want, I'm probably going to choose a between size 8 because that is my favorite. This, is a, this button is the right size for an overcoat but we're going to use it because it's very easy to see because it's very large. And we're also going to use red thread so you can see it. Normally we might match the color of the thread to the, to the button as we've done here. But um, here I, wanna really, I want you to really see it. There's two ways that you could do this. You could thread your needle double and then you have a loop at the end which you then will thread back through to create a knot once you've already put the needle through the fabric once. That's a way, one way I like doing it to begin. Another way is to take single thread and then to knot it. My favorite way to knot the thread is, okay, watch this. Here's the end. I take the needle, I put it like this, and then I do, depending on the thickness of the thread, two or three, four times around and then I grab that, those loops I made and send them to the end. So you can see it creates a nice little knot there. That's if I want to do single. You can do it the same with double, but um, I'm going to start with this one. So we begin. This pencil is absolutely perfect for creating. As you can see back here, actually, we have this jacket here that's ready to have buttons put on, and we've just marked button placement with this pencil. It's the perfect tool for it. So I, to mark, when, I, when we determine where the button placement goes, I just do a little twist, and that's, where, that's my mark. So that's where I'm gonna sew it. So, I just take a little bite of the fabric. It's maybe about an eighth of an inch long. And in this case, since I'm starting with a loop, I'm going back through that loop. So now it's knotted to my fabric. Usually for suit buttons, we want to 
sew them, as you can see on, on the shirt and this jacket, we want to sew them with the threads going up and down or across, but in the same direction. Occasionally you see people who, who sew an X, and that's not, it's not wrong, it's just a style choice, but it is not as traditional as two rows. So to create the shank, there are a couple of tricks, ways to do that. You can take, if you have a big needle, like a knitter's needle, you can take that and lay it between the holes here and sew over that until you're done sewing. Or this is, um, or you can take a matchstick, or this is a Q-tip that I've just cut the ends off of. So you can take various, various tools to help you create a shank. Um, I'll try it that way first. So first, I, I wanna make sure that my holes don't end up to, like I want to create not too wide a base. The base should be, the base of, of these stitches should be pretty, about the same size as the holes of the button. So, now it doesn't matter whether I do all one hole first and then the other, or what. That's not important. What's important is that I go about, I like to do about three or four times per hole, and that's with my thread doubled. That's the look that I like. So there we are. Now I pull out whatever it was that I had in there. And now I've got these loops that are all the same length. And I pull on the button a little bit to make them nice and tight. And then take this thread and wind it around my button. So around, or sorry, around the threads that I just made here and make it you don't want to make it so tight that um, that you create creases in your fabric from pulling all those threads perfectly together, but you don't want it to be, you don't want there to be any extra thread loops to catch on anything. So here, if you can see, I'm just creating a little, I'll go that way, just creating, I've looped it, I never count. Um, so that it's an, a nice, so that it just covers everything there. And then I take my needle and I send it through the thread, hold the, the end that's attached to the threads, not the needle end. And now I've got this loop here and I send my needle through the loop once, and then through the other loop that I just made, and that's one knot. I never do just one knot though, because I wanna make sure that it doesn't open. So let's do it one more time. I'm taking the needle and pushing it through my shank Finding that thread loop, sending my needle through the thread loop, and then through the new loop that was just created. And now what I do at the end here is I just put my needle in here just to help that knot go nice and even down to the bottom here. and then pull it tight to get that knot nice and tight. And then I'm gonna go, if, if you have several layers of fabric here, the way I like to finish this is to come up a ways away from, go through between the two layers of fabric and come up a little bit away 
to, you know, something, some distance away from the button to, and then cut it off here so that there's some extra thread inside that helps that knot stay knotted. So now you can see that's very securely fastened on there. It's got this nice shank that is, it's, which is exactly the thickness of whatever it is I was using. In this case, a bit of a Q-tip. And there it is. You can also sew the button and make a shank without using anything. Just being careful to make your loops the same length and with experience, that's what I prefer. So that's what I do most of the time. I don't usually find something to sew over, but um, whatever works for you. So now we're gonna put the final button onto this shirt. I've got my thread doubled, which means that there's two threads going through the needle hole. I've got a knot in the end of it, and I'm starting with putting the knot underneath where the shank will be. So I don't want my knot on the back side because it just creates too much bulk there. So now. In this case, I'm not using an extra tool to create the shank depth. Instead, I'm just pulling the thread tight and then pulling the button away just a tiny bit for how much I, the distance I'd like the shank to be. And then I'm gonna hold it like this the whole time that I stitch so that I create a shank that is exactly the, the, the depth that I want. I'm making sure that my holes, that I, the places I'm stitching through are very close together in the back so that I don't, if, if I don't do that, then it'll pucker up after I stitch it, which you'll really be able to see with these stripes. And this time, I'm gonna send it through to the other hole place. And now I've got three or four stitches on that side, and so it holds itself pretty well at the distance that I want from my shirt. Alright, so this time I'm coming up outside the button because I've got an, an oh, I'll go through one more time. It looks like it wants one more on this side. And then this one, I will not go through the shirt. Instead, I'm just gonna hold it here. I'm gonna go just a couple of times around because we don't need a big shank this time. And then I'm gonna send the needle through the, the threads, hold my loop, put the needle through the loop, and then through the new loop I just created. Send it down, make sure that's nice and tight. And then one more time, hold the loop, through the loop, through the new loop. And then I'm not gonna cut it off right there because I wanna give a little bit of extra insurance that my knots will hold. So I'm gonna send the needle between the two layers of fabric to come up some distance away from my button. And then Cut it off flush. And there's our new button. So all of these materials that we're using for this, we sell in our store at Bias Bespoke, the thread snips, the pencil, the thread, needles, all of this. Um, 
So I hope that you find what you're looking for and that you enjoy your work.